Now, if you've been in the fly tying game for any amount of time, you may already be familiar with Dave Hughes. I've tied several of his patterns on the show here, reviewed a few of his books, and he is absolutely one of my favorite tires and authors. And today's pattern comes to you from his 1995 book, Wet Flies. Now, it's in several of his other books too, but this is the one I'm going to use as a reference today. Now, Hughes doesn't claim to have invented the all-fur wet fly. Other tires have made them, going back to GEM Skews, Pete Heidi, even as far back as George Selwyn Marriott back in the 1800s. But I think it's safe to say that Hughes has certainly done his part to make them as popular as they are today. And of all his patterns, he says this series is the one that most blurs the lines between nymphs and wet flies. And that's what I love about them. They're great patterns whether you fish them like a wet fly, swing them through a current, or dead drift them like a nymph. They're not hard to tie and they don't use many materials. This one I'm doing for you today just uses some squirrel body hair, either a pelt or these zonker strips. And then a hair's mask. And I recommend this to new tires all the time. If you plan on tying any nymphs or wet flies, a hair's mask is almost a must have. They're pretty cheap and Hairline makes them in all kinds of great colors. Now again, they're not hard patterns to tie, but there is one technique I want to show you for flies like this, and that's splitting thread. Now you can do the same thing I'm going to show you with a dubbing loop, but this method will save you a little bit of thread, and I think it's just a little bit easier. Now you don't need any fancy tools for this, but if you are going to tie a lot of flies like this, Stonfo does make a couple of tools that do make it just a little bit easier. And the first one is our dubbing loop clip. Now you could use a chip clip or something similar to do the same thing. And that's exactly what I did before I got these, but these do make it a little bit easier. First off, they're the perfect size and they give you the right amount of tension for the materials we use. And the next tool I'm gonna to show you, it's their thread splitter. Now this thing really is a, one of those nice to have tools. I mean, I don't recommend this to a lot of new tires, but if you're gonna be tying a lot of nymphs or wet flies where you're splitting thread, after you've done a dozen or so of them splitting the thread with a bodkin, you'll realize that a tool like this can save you a lot of time and make you a little bit more efficient. So back to this all fur wet fly. I'm going to be tying it as a hare's ear, but feel free to use this technique and mix it up, make any bug you want. Change the colors, add a rib, skip the tail. They're great patterns, they catch a lot of fish, and they're pretty fun to tie. So there's one in the vise, a Dave Hughes hare's ear all fur wet fly. If you're thinking that's a buggy fly, you'd be absolutely right. It certainly is pretty buggy. Now, sizes for this are gonna be pretty much your standard wet fly nymph sizes, 12 to 16. I'm tying this on a 12. It's a one extra long, one extra strong wet fly hook. And the thread for this one calls for an orange. Now, this is a burnt orange. I tried it with a regular orange and I didn't get very far because that was just way too orange. So I went with a burnt orange and I think it's gonna look a little bit better. And this is a 140 denier. Had to step up my thread size for one of the techniques I'm gonna be showing you in a minute. Now for the tail, you're gonna to wanna to snip just a small tuft of fur right below the, the hair's ear, but right above the eye socket. So a moderate sized clump, let's go with about this right here. And I'm gonna to try to catch it in about a hook gap in length. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. Now I'm gonna just bury this in because we do have a fuzzy body, so you don't have to worry about too many lumps or anything. So go ahead and take your thread right back here to where we wanna start wrapping the body and put a good bit of wax on it. Now for this, I just snipped a clump right down along the cheek. So I've got a lot of guard hairs and a lot of under fur. I'm gonna try and pull out most of the guard hairs. Then just roll it around in the palm of my hand with my finger until I get something about like this. And this should dub on you know, a direct dub, just gonna put it on pretty thin, but we're not gonna wrap it real tight. So maybe a three inch noodle is gonna take us up there a couple eye lengths back. Okay, mine was getting a little bit crazy up there on the front. Now here's something I've been doing. I don't take my dubbing brush to it because I don't wanna pull it out too much. And since I wrapped it on here pretty loosely, I'm just gonna kind of rough it up and pull it out with my fingers here until I get a little bit of a fuzzy body. And I do have one little crazy one right there I'm gonna go ahead and snip. So that's the fuzzy body I want. But before I go to the next step, I'm gonna wrap this back just a little bit, give me some room for this next step. Now before the next step though, let's go ahead and prepare our squirrel fur dubbing. Now you could use this from a pelt. I'm using it from a zonker strip, makes it just a little bit easier. 
and I'm gonna use this Stonfo clip. This is a one inch clip, so this is a small size. You can use any kind of clip you want, a chip clip or um, office supply clip, really anything is gonna work for you. And what you'll wanna do is just grab it, pinch it kind of close to the, the pelt right there, and we're gonna snip it off right there, about one half inch of material. So now, there we go, I've got about a half inch of this squirrel fur in my clip. I'm gonna set that to the side, and now we're gonna split this thread. And what I do here, I just pull my thread up and then I'll put it up where you can see it and see which way it's gonna naturally start spinning. So this one is counterclockwise, so I know that spinning it counterclockwise is gonna flatten it out. So I'll give it about, let it spin, oh, 10 times or so. And now our thread is starting to flat out. You see that? So what you can do here, you can take your bodkin and just pull it up and then try to split it right in the middle. And so we, that's uh, pretty close to in the middle right there. You don't always get it the first try, but you know, a couple of tries and you can probably get it fairly evenly split. But now if you're gonna be tying a lot of these flies, let me introduce you to this tool. This is Stonfo's thread splitter. And how this one works, you see that? that little V right there, uh, it's got spring loaded, and when you pull down, a needle pops up in it. So what we do here, we just lift this up and then put this tool right up in there, and it might take a couple of tries to get it, but we just do that right there, and that one split pretty evenly first attempt. So hold it you know, apart with your fingers. Let's pull a little bit more thread out right here. And I am going to put some wax on this before I put this squirrel fur in it. And here's my clip with this squirrel fur. And I'm just going to lay it right in between it and then let this thread, you know, grab it. Now we are going to spin it, but not yet because that's not positioned exactly how we want it. I'm going to kind of pull these out and get them about right in the middle. And I'm also gonna spread it out. This was only about a half an inch of material, and I'm gonna spread it out to about an inch, maybe an inch and a half before I spin this. Okay, now when you've got it in there, you know, kind of even, kind of how you want, spin this clockwise. And this is gonna take a fair amount of spinning, maybe 20, 30 revolutions. And you'll know when you've got it tight enough, you've got a nice little dubbing brush and these hairs aren't gonna slip or come out on you. And since for this fly, I pulled out pretty much just the amount of fur that I wanted, I'm gonna wrap it all on here. And each wrap, I'm gonna just pull back a little bit farther and it's gonna give us a, a big fuzzy collar up here. Now there's fuzz going all over the place, but are we gonna be able to clean up that head and keep an eye open to get our tippet through? I think so. Let's just put a few extra wraps right here and get ready for the whip finish. Now clean up on a fly like this is probably nothing. Just make sure you, you, know, you haven't clobbered your eye you can still get your tippet through there and then put a drop of head cement on it. You might even want to rough it up. If you didn't make it fuzzy enough, take your dubbing brush and fluff it out even more. So that's it, pretty simple pattern, but a nice technique to know how to do with splitting thread like that. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.